All right, let's do a video on um, converting uh, equations from polar equations to rectangular equations. And let's start with something like this. We looked at something like this in class uh, at one point, and we saw that it was a circle shifted up the y-axis by 1. Now, to convert from something like this to something involving x or y, there's a couple of things we need to keep in mind. Uh, how the radius is connected to x and y, and also how x and y are related to the radius and the angle. So these are some of the things you might have seen in the text. What we tend to do, actually, is to use slightly different forms of these. Rather, x over r equals cosine of theta, and y over r equals sine of theta. Okay? And what we do is we take each side um, of this equation and do some, some transforming, some substituting, if you will. So r is the square root of x squared plus y squared. And then we have 2, that's of no significance, times sine. Well, sine is y over r. Now, it might seem odd that r appears again. Now, that's fine, though. We know how r is related to x and y. And so we continue to substitute until we don't have uh, the r anymore. This is 2y over the square root. Okay. So now if we multiply both sides, we get x squared plus y squared equals 2y. And um, we're going a little further here than you might ordinarily try to do. Because I, I mentioned before that this equation is a circle shifted up by 1. And this doesn't quite look like a circle. If we move everything to one side, and you're familiar with how circles look, it might look like a circle. There's some x stuff, uh, some y stuff, and then this is supposed to be radius stuff, but there's nothing here yet. Well, here's what we can do. We can add a 1 to both sides. Now, why would you add a 1, you might ask? Well, you add a 1 so that I can factor all the, uh, all the y stuff. Now those terms, y squared minus 2y and 1, form a, a factorable trinomial, and it's just y minus 1 squared. So here's the uh, final form. This is exactly what you'd expect it to be based on the, the graph of the polar equation. It's a circle shifted up by 1 with radius 1. Okay. Let's try another one. So uh, another problem uh, might be, say, starting with r equals 1 over cosine theta minus sine theta. That looks kind of intimidating. It's hard to even see what that what that is. It looks quite complicated. Um, it's, you should take a, maybe a moment here and graph it. You'll be surprised as, as to what it actually works out to be. Well, let's go ahead and substitute what r is, x squared plus y squared, and then we'll substitute for cosine and sine, just like the last problem. Cosine is x over r, and y is, sorry, sine is y over r. Now we can combine those two terms because they have the same denominator. So this is 1 over x minus y over r. And then we can take the, the reciprocal of this term and multiply. So x squared plus y squared equals r over x minus y. I've kept the r. You might be asking, well, why haven't I um, substituted the r? I'm just lazy, really, and I didn't want to write the square root over and over again. Now that I've cleaned up the right-hand side, however, I will write the square root in there for r. Notice we have the square root on both sides, and so I can cancel that out, and I have 1 equals 1 over x minus y. Now let's keep on going. This simplifies quite a bit. Let's multiply both sides by x minus y. That equals 1. And then solve. And we'll have, oops, we have y equals uh, x minus 1. Well, that's a really simple equation. That's just the line slope 1, y minus at minus 1. Look what we started with. 
And this brings up a good point, that some things are easy in polar coordinates, circles and ellipses and whatnot, spirals, and some things are hard, things like lines, because they're very straight. They don't have any of the circular symmetry, so they're not best dealt with in polar coordinates. Um, all right, the next video will be concerned with rectangular to polar.